scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Mental transformation. Please look up. Your mind is a miracle that God gave you that is connected to your success and connected to your destiny. Again, to balance it up. There are many believers that are not open towards mental transformation, haven't exalted the issue of spirituality. Most people are bankrupt mentally. And when I talk about mental transformation, it is just is beyond secular enlightenment. You can be knowledgeable in a field, but not knowledgeable holistically as touching the laws of life there are many intelligent people who are learned but when it comes to understanding the cosmos they do not have that understanding are we together mental transformation in second corinthians chapter 10 i believe from verse 4 please give it to us second corinthians chapter 10 here's what it says for the weapons of our warfare it says are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Then it says, casting down <clears throat> imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. When it has to do with your success and your destiny, the following truths stand right please the quality of a man's life is tied to his mindset the quality of a man's life the quality of a man's life is tied to his mindset mindsets define our limits and our possibilities in life i wrote here mindsets define our limits and they define our possibilities in life this is very true and this is very powerful the bible says to guard your heart interchange for mind with all diligence it says for out of it from out of it proceeds the issues of life the quality of your life and my life depends on your mindset. Listen, I don't want to start boring you with all the discussions. We've done quite some extensive discussions as touching mindsets here. But then it's important to just, maybe by way of a recap, remind you that a mindset is a sustained thinking pattern. If you're writing, you may want to write, please. That a mindset is a sustained thinking pattern. A sustained thinking pattern. A mindset is an ideology. A mindset is a viewpoint. Like we used to do in fine arts, they taught something called perspective. Now, if someone were outside and you were asked to draw this entire not just the auditorium but just draw this whole perspective those at overflow three may not be captured in his representation because of the limitation of his view 
this is what mindset is mindset is the lens and the vista from which you view life this is very important your mindset is the lens it is the vista from which you view life your perceptions hallelujah and i did teach you when we did discussions on mindsets that a stronghold is a faulty mindset that has been fortified by the presence of demon spirits to keep the victim thinking that way let me repeat myself for emphasis that a stronghold is a faulty thinking pattern that has been fortified by the presence of demon spirits to keep the victim thinking that way hallelujah are we together according to the bible and of course the intelligence of veterans who have studied subjects relating to this they teach us that there are essentially about five ways that mindsets are formed let me run it through just for the sake of those who would be encountering this knowledge for the first time number one the first way mindsets are formed are through our cultural experiences you may want to write that as fast as you can our cultural experiences in social studies we define culture as the way of life of a people are we together now so chances are excellent that if you grew, if you grew up sociologically speaking seeing people behave in a certain way seeing people respond to life in a certain way that becomes the natural way that you respond to life hallelujah culture cultural influences i will always observe that there are positive sides to culture sides that emphasize morality excellence respect empathy and all these kinds of things but there are also negative satanic aspects of culture that if you do not edit out of your life they will stop you from attaining a glorious destiny are we together now one of the reasons why Zechariah became dumb was because he wanted to fight a new order that God was bringing. When he gave him a word and that it was going to be John, he shut his mouth so that he would not use his mouth, which is a reflection of his mindset to destroy something precious that God was doing. Compromising on John's destiny would eventually affect the arrival of Jesus. Are we together? So he shut his mouth until he agreed in writing that even though no one had been called that name through the family line that this was truly what god was doing and his mouth opened culture is very important but there are many people today who are failures thanks to culture are we together there are many aspects of culture especially within our african context that endorses mediocrity endorses all kinds of things we find solace there is a, a a very a very strong consolation that a lot of people receive especially and respectfully so we who have come from the middle belt because of the evangelical context right our emphasis has always been on evangelism soul winning and then our eventual transition to heaven and that is true and profitable except that the gospel when it came from those who it came from thanks to them they did not communicate the whole counsel of god and so aspects that make for an excelling life responsibility and other dimensions were not captured so many people were well-intentioned loving god but they became irresponsible fathers irresponsible to society are we together and then you go to other regions and the emphasis is on success and making it regardless your stand with god culture if not managed can be the foundation of a man's destruction number two very quickly our past experiences our past experiences are very important they can mold our mindsets there are some of us who have failed so many times that subjects that talk about favor is far from your life because in your mind it is wrong to ever attain anything early and let me tell you this is still a spirit that we have to trust God to take away from Africa by the time you see a young man in his 20s suddenly excelling even with the dignity of kingdom integrity people begin to frown and say no it should not be that way 
you in other words you are too young to be attaining this kind of result are we together you go to nations like china and you see little children with witty inventions i mean taking over the world redefining civilizations because their culture does not seem to put anything on age your creativity and your value is what gives you access doesn't matter whether you're a baby and of course there are other negative aspects there, there is a heritage we have in africa and around respect and the rest like i said earlier on that must be preserved but with respect to success the average person in africa and nigeria who wants to rise your first assignment is to break through the limiting beliefs and sometimes you may not even have the energy to continue if you do survive hallelujah our past experiences number three our family backgrounds our family backgrounds the kind of family that you come from can affect your overall perception about God respectfully speaking if you come from a family where your father was not attentive to spiritual things you never saw your family observing devotions they were careless and less as fair as far as the things of God is concerned is the same thing you will reproduce as a father except God shows you mercy are we together now yes listen every national problem was first a regional problem that was not solved every regional problem was first a community problem that was not solved and every community problem was a family problem that was not solved the unit of all troubles is family the unit of all excellence is still family are we together there are people today no matter how perverted they become there was a, a healthy godly foundation there is a way they cannot deviate beyond a certain point the foundation of godliness is too strong their conscience will not allow them go that far are we together yes if you come from a family where you are the first serious christian out of 17 people chances are excellent that if god does not help you by bringing other godly people to stand you may not last because even in your backsliding state you'll still be better than everybody who is there family background can i give us two more your association your association is a very very serious molder of your mindset your association there are many of us who were good and responsible people until certain relationships were introduced in your life and listen when it has to do with the influence of association there is no age limit there are people who did well in their lives respectfully speaking even down to adulthood but just when they were about culminating their lives the devil introduced satanic demonic relationships into their lives that just destroyed them our world is full of such people are we together now yes oh the woman was doing well loving the lord except that she now traveled abroad or traveled somewhere and met a group of atheists and now you do not even know whether she's on fire again that's why the Bible says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. The Bible says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and that on that law doth he meditate day and night, that he will be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season. And the Bible says, Whose leaf does not wither, but whatsoever he doeth prospers. There you find prosperity again. Are we together you must be able to edit your association there's no such thing like we're born from the same village if they if if your association and your friends do not hold your values it's time to respectfully summon the courage to start editing people love is a command association is not are we together when it was time for god to use abraham mightily he told him come out of your father's house out of every tribe kindred do you know why because sometimes your own people love you too much to allow you be great 
they know the risk that you are taking by being great and they can love you too much to allow you rise now watch this when it has to do with the mind ladies and gentlemen please hear me I have taught it several times while we're in Zaria here that I don't care what changes in your physical environment if your mindset does not change if you try to change anything from the exterior please look up you are only wasting your time are we together imagine with me a person who stands in front of a mirror your dressing mirror now and if you see a thread on your head do you put your hand in the mirror to remove it what do you do you remove it here and the guy in the mirror also does the same thing it will be foolish to try to put your hand through the mirror to remove the thread so if you find something wrong your physical environment will always be a messless reflection of your mindset and your ideologies apostle i don't know why i don't nobody seems to like me everybody runs away from me when the problem is everybody the problem is you Everybody cannot be wrong. Any, everybody cannot be a devil. Everybody cannot be a fool. The problem is you. Psychologists teach us that you attract to your life the physical equivalent of your most dominant thoughts. The resultant effect of your mindset is what you will attract. The physical environment. Why am I attracting wicked and devilish and negative people? It may be that there is a mental construct you have of sarcasm, of laughing at people rejoicing over the pain of others and there is an energy let me tell you the truth there is an energy that your mindset releases that can attract all kinds of negative people to your life the bible says he that wants friends must show himself friendly is that true yes it says a merry heart do it good like medicine but it says a companion of fools shall be destroyed i told you again about association that if there are five wise people in your life you did not count well there are actually six if there are five foolish people in your life you also did not count well there are actually six because you will always be a reflection of your association are we together yes now here is the tragedy in our world we're about to pray the tragedy in our world is that we are obsessed with trying to change the physical things around us so let me wear a nice cloth wear a nice shoe probably drive a nice car are we together and have a physical expression of success whereas my mind is still the old me can i tell you no matter what you try to change physically this is one of the ironclad rules when it has to do with good success. You can move from one room into a great house. If your mindset is still in one room, that house will bring you back. I assure you, it is a law. Nothing in your life changes until you change. Friends can change, your result will still be the same. Geography can change, your result will still be the same. Have you seen people who traveled abroad and spent decades there only to return back still looking like their past? Because your exterior is not what changes you. Are we together? So the Bible says it this way. It said, let this mind be in you. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus did not just excel for nothing. There was a mental construct. There was a thinking. Are we together? Now gentlemen two of you please come very quickly let me use you now watch this very carefully i like to teach graphically just stand here facing me i'm glad one is wearing white just stand turn around facing me now watch this i want you to tell me which of these two you will most likely help okay so this gentleman you're a respectful person when you see me you will bow and greet and act very wisely thank god you are bigger than him this guy is helping me act my drama very well are we together when you see me just push me and pass me and two of you are looking for help are we together by push don't worry it's not any there's there's no cause that is coming i didn't say push me and fall me just uh, okay just move like you didn't see me before you push me down now are we together now watch this these are two gentlemen let's even assume they were born on the same day in fact call them twins this guy for whatever reason 
either because of his submission to a man of God who has cultured his understanding and his mindset. Are we together? And this guy, let's assume he went to one school somewhere and then eventually this is what he has become now. Are we together? Now, this these guys are looking for favor they are trusting god for breakthrough in fact call both of them christians let's assume they are saved now this guy comes to me come please and you see from his mindset he has learned the value of respect he's learned the value of honor this guy may not even know much but just for practicing honor he sees an elderly person is greeting the person you don't just walk and say what is there is he feeding me is he my father you have been taught that life works on the principle of seed time and harvest so the person does not have to be your biological father you may push the man because baba is old and he looks at you and says may your children do the same for you you will say it does not matter until your firstborn shows you and then your secondborn adds to it then your thirdborn adds to it and then the lord will remind you one day that as long as the earth remains seed time and harvest now you will wonder why this guy seems to be well cultured the fact that he already has as a mindset the law of seed time and harvest makes him know that laws are vicious warriors laws fight more than men are we together so he comes to me how are you fine and he's greeting me and you see because of that from his mindset he's acting out his mindset i will most likely be endeared to him oh what are you doing now um well sir i'm trusting god for a job somewhere oh really you don't have a job where is your dad now oh sadly he's passed on now you see it is easy for the holy spirit to drive me to help this man because already his mental preparation is already supporting what he wants i will most likely tell him okay come and see me tomorrow now our man come and pass me i used to be friends with his father and now he has passed me like this in this example and you can see he's now moving and he does not care then let's imagine that where he's going to i am the ceo now you open the door and see me seated and i stand up and say my friend are you not the one who passed me there yes and he's doing all these funny things we do in our generation pride for nothing so what are you looking for a job i say it's all right um, you'll hear from us you can go and now we we'll end up saying no the devil and this guy will go home and he's praying and saying lord why is it that all my friends run away from me am i that bad no this is what is wrong listen another example stand facing me let's assume that this guy i will use one more example eh? and then i'll give you a big hug don't worry you're a nice person watch this let's assume that this guy say is an arm robber and let's yes you are not the one i'm talking about let's assume this one is a pastor are we together watch this so this guy carries a gun watch this please and is jumping from house to house killing people destroying all kinds of things sometimes killing somebody just for fifty thousand, because in his mind fifty thousand is greater than that life that has died are we together now watch this whereas this one is a pastor loving people healing the brokenhearted if two of them drop dead here you see you don't call this a pastor dead body you don't call this an arm robber dead body you call both of them dead bodies so who was really the pastor the mindset not the body who was really the arm robber the mindset not the dead body now let's assume this our man now comes for koinonia and suddenly the fire of god falls upon him and after two years now he becomes a pastor too are we together now you see the same person who would have beat the living daylight out of you now he loves you respectful he's greeting you what change not his body what change you spent six years in school as a doctor did they change your body what did they change listen listen if you touch your pocket and it's empty don't blame your pocket don't even blame your hand they are all report cards they are telling you something is wrong with your mind are we together now now i can take let me use money for example because people seem to understand this is one thousand naira watch this 
if I give this gentleman 1,000 Naira and his mindset has not been trained to receive this, his mindset will compel him to act in ways that must make this money leave him. Have you seen people like that? It's a waste to give them anything physical. The mindset, there are people who may not even have money, but you give him 100,000, you know what he will do? He will get a car to Kaduna and go to a boutique and buy a suit. The 100,000 is what he has home and abroad. He will buy a suit, 90,000, and snap with it. And that's it. And while he enters the bus, coming back, they will steal it. Listen, listen. Are we together? For somebody who may just start working and God just opens a door, the uncle says, well, let me just give you one million. And the guy says, I've suffered. He may go and collect a loan of five million and buy a car of 4.5. And then while he's driving, the first person the car will hit is the convoy of a governor. They will now say, come out and sit on the ground first. Before you will sell this car and fix this one. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. Why was he the only one who borrowed it? He was not the only one cutting the tree. What did the rest use? Mindset. Some of you right now, you are wearing your future now because your mindset has taught you that except you look like that. And unfortunately, respectfully so, there are many kinds of books and programs that keep culturing people. You know, can fake it till you make it. Oh, these things are not in the Bible. You will destroy your life. There are people with what God is doing in your life right now. If you had a healthy mindset, the blessing of God is enough at this level for you. Mama may not have much, but she's sending 50,000. You may not have a, a very, may, may not be a good job, but at least 50, 60,000 is coming every week. What is that one? If you cannot manage 50,000, you cannot manage 500,000. You cannot manage 5 million. You cannot manage 50 million. God loves you too much to give you that kind of blessing when you have not. He say, he that is faithful in little. Are we together now? Someone else will be living off 10,000, but you look at that person and you will think the person is physically a multi-millionaire because of priorities, decorum. You will never come to that person's house and lack a good food. You will not see the person roaming around restaurants with 10,000. They will go and honorably buy gari, buy rice, and learn how to cook. The day you have money, you can, you can, do you know I used to cook before? <laughs> I can't even remember. You put me with a pot, now I will pray. And cut everything. You have to first promise that you must eat whatever at the end of the meal. Hallelujah. So watch this. This guy has a disposition that is very friendly. Every time people come to you, how are you? When people have a problem, you are very attentive to them. Listen, oh, are you okay? Are you fine? And you find out that everybody wants to come around him. Why? Because there is a mental disposition that is very friendly. Are we together? But someone else will come with a very pungent mindset. The lifespan of friendship in your life is two weeks. You must say something that will backfire eventually. The friend comes and after laughing, once they close the door, you will laugh. I say, look at this person's shoe. How this shoe? It's as if it's, it's, as if it's 30 naira. And you, 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 you act like that and God is watching and men too are watching. Now, the day a gentleman wants to marry you and he comes to seek counsel and he says, sir, there's somebody I'm looking at. The friend will say, who? Say, no. God and me, we love you too much. Your, your destiny is colorful and is bright. You will never, never, I will not allow this kind of thing. And you are wondering, why are doors closed for me? Is someone learning now? This is where it is. Some of you are angry. The moment you get angry, the only person who will calm you down is the Holy Spirit. You can literally carry bottle and hurt another person. We are all like that in our family. You either change or you will suffer the bitter pill of violating kingdom laws. Is someone learning? There is nobody who is like that. The presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives should change us. There are some of you who are very sarcastic. If someone looks at you and says, you are looking beautiful. You say, I know you. You are always insulting. 
if you don't feel good about yourself the key is to listen to teachings that build you but someone may be well intentioned maybe a very sincere gesture but you are interpreting it from the lens do you know there are people who come to church and you saw you see somebody looking your direction and smiling you know what the person is thinking about how will i pay my rent and you say the person is laughing at you the person has enough problem he's just he just so happens you know you can be looking here but you are not here so this is how the landlord will throw me out and you now sit down and say you see how they are looking at me let me tell you the truth people love you but they love themselves too don't make a mistake of flattering yourself that everybody is dedicating their time to just insult you people have enough trouble in their own lives are we together there are some of you you can go with five friends you will buy donut or puff puff for 300 naira your friends are watching you you will eat everything there and squeeze the leather and throw it in their presence and act like you didn't do anything you know that message apostle preached <laughs> and they are watching you and then you find out you will never have friends again in your life is someone learning say in the name of jesus please shout it say in the name of jesus i receive grace to contend for mental transformation listen every person you see today that looks admirable i submit to you they did not come like that by default in Adam, all of us came by the fallen nature. It's just that other people sat down and started making an intentional work on their lives. Are we together? Mindsets. I saw several mindsets in me growing up and even in ministry. And I said, no, no, no. I have to work on this mindset. Some of them are cultural. Some of them came from all kinds of backgrounds. It's your assignment to work with the word of God. I always recall a very interesting story years ago we went to hire instruments for a crusade and when we went to hire instruments it now led us to go to a church one Pentecostal church and the man was preaching about the wealth of Solomon you know coming from our Orthodox background so what is this guy saying like this you mean in a whole service you are just jumping and saying you'll be an, another Solomon hmm. well we're begging for sound so we had to behave ourselves we sat down after the grace we now walked up to the man and said we're well, young people we have a crusade and we're begging for sound this man lambasted us and used any kind of evil word you can think about i was just watching that guy who a few minutes ago was preaching about solomon's wealth and this man now is now insulting innocent children we didn't hold a gun we didn't hold anything we came sincerely with our envelope with a letter to beg for sound you would have just said go away if I meet that man today, I will love him. I will say, may God bless you. And how are you doing now? If that guy did not change, I didn't need to prophesy about his life. I can tell you what the result will be. That person could be you. You are driving everybody in your life today because of the little privilege you have. A day will come, everybody you are driving. You see, as you are praying in tongues, they are praying too. Even with the torn trousers, they are praying too. Even with the 200 naira shoe, they are praying to. Don't downplay what the Spirit of God can do in the life of a man. Are we together now? Your assignment, ladies and gentlemen, is to focus on investing on your mind. One day, go better is a sociological wise saying. It does not carry any power. Time does not change anything. Time only reveals. Are you learning? As a preacher, as an individual there are many mindsets that you need to have one of them the chiefest let me give you two can i give you two mindsets to incul inculcate this night number one the mindset of honor number two the mindset of gratitude write this down with these two mindsets alone i i guarantee you by the integrity of scripture you will be more superior than many people the mindset of honor and the mindset of gratitude you can use these two mindsets to recreate your world i don't care what you currently meet it as write it down number one the mindset of honor get my teaching the law of honor honor is the discerning honor is the celebrating and honor is the rewarding of individuals for their distinctive difference and the value that they bring when I came up here, I took out time to honor our parents. 
leaving their schedules and coming here to honor Cornell. This is the CEO of, of the whole of Basawa to honor all of these people. Now, you come and touch me. It's both God and them that will deal with you. God is doing his own from heaven. You know how the flood of Noah, heaven gave his reign. The earth too added his own. Whoever was in the middle. Are we together now? Honor. Many of you, God has allowed great people to pass by you. But simply because you do not have a mindset of honor, you take people for granted. You will go to the office of a man that you should never have gotten there except by the privilege of a relationship. And as soon as you get there, you will just sit down. What do you want? What do you have? You call it confidence and they are watching you. CCTV is speaking you. And as you are leaving, they say, let this guy never come around this secretariat again. Apostle, why is it that when good things are about to happen, they go away? Demons only take advantage of the mindset that is there and they build a stronghold around it. So you keep traveling from place to place and recycling the same mistake. Please listen. I'm, this is a deliverance service. God is showing someone the reason why doors never seem to open. Are we together? Try this. Look for the top five people who have contributed immensely in your life, send them a text message and say thank you. Start with your parents. Mommy, just to say thank you. Apostle, you don't know my mother. After insulting me and calling me a witch, don't worry, she was just angry. Are you really a witch? Who gave birth to the witch then? Don't worry. Your mother is not a witch. You are not a witch. Just be, that is the purpose of maturity. You should know that they were just mismanaging their anger. But you send a text. Somebody helped you to pay your... Um, maybe school fees or something don't just send text when you are now looking for help Calvary greetings and then two minutes later another text is coming so just to let you know you know that the way this my life is I'm the firstborn that's not the issue are we together say amen, amen. practice honor and practice gratitude and watch just with these two mindsets Watch what happens to you. Honor to God, honor to men. I'm giving it to you as an assignment. This night, send a text to somebody. And don't send this kind of text message that looks like an insult. I was told to send you a text by apostle. Thanks. Is that gratitude? Is that honor? Some of you are like that. You can send 30 text messages begging. And then the person now gives you money and after three hours, you just say thanks. You don't even spell it well. Thanks. Does that sound like gratitude? You see, the principle of the intention of gratitude is to make the giver perceive that you are grateful. It is your assignment to use every means, godly means within your power. Let me tell you the truth. You never will need to ask anything twice if you give thanks for the first one. Are we together? There are people who can be so, they, they can be so grateful, you feel indebted to them. Even when you forget them, God will remind you. Hallelujah. One day, I shared something for some little children, and after they had gone, I was busy doing something, and then one of them, one tiny girl, just ran and came, and I just saw somebody hug me from behind. And I just turned, I said, who is this? And she asked me to bring my ears down. She said she was telling me thank you again. Ah, I wanted to see her parents first. Who would have trained this kind of girl? Eventually, I told them to get the parents and I said, whatever it would take for this girl to rise to be great, me, I'll handle it. Now, watch this. I'm not trying to brag. I'm trying to tell you that a child just scheduled a season. It doesn't matter whether the parents are interested in being prosperous or not. The child has bailed herself out. Are you seeing that now? How many people have passed your life who you can edge the memory of your honor to them and compel them to attend to your destiny? Mindsets. Is someone learning? How many times do you go to the Lord and say thank you? Father, thank you. You are the lion of the tribe of Judah. You are frowning the root of David and as if you are just entering his gates with thanksgiving. And now that you are inside the gates, God, come out. Oh, I'm in your gates now. I've been warning you this and that and that whereas there's somebody in the hospital stage 2 cancer and the person says thank you Lord that I'm even alive 
I'm not asking you for anything. I'm alive. And God says, you do not know the value of life and health. You are here harassing me and saying you are eating only rice every day. You need something more. Whereas someone is about dying and saying, Lord, thank you that you are keeping me alive. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. One more time, say, thank you, Jesus. Honor and gratitude. I thought, I think it was in Abuja. And let me teach you if you've not gotten it. If you are in any kind of relationship and you don't have value, your contribution should be gratitude. Write it down. I teach you a powerful secret. If there is any kind of relationship you are part of, if you do not have what to offer in terms of value, let your offering be gratitude. Perpetual gratitude. And you have made an eternal contribution to that relationship. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Daddy, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for my school fees. Thank you for everything. Uh -uh. What for? I stopped paying your school fees 15 years ago. I just took out time to reflect on your kindness. They may just laugh. Somebody who is your employer, I just came to say thank you, sir. Whereas other people are insulting him. This man is a wizard. His wife is a witch. Wicked man. He's the only one eating the money while we are working. But he's the boss and it is his company. And someone just walks up to say, sir, I just held this little bottle of wine. May not be much, but just to sincerely appreciate you. In my time here, I have learned and I'm committed to improvement. Usually they will act like he did not enter them. You just go. When they are looking for those to promote, you will see the man fighting as if they charm him to retain you and to see that you rise. God loves everybody, but he does not trust everybody. Zaria, please hear me. It is not the lack of money. It is not the economic situation. It is something about your mindset. I have taught you that any door that opened before and now is closed, it is dishonor that has closed it. Never trivialize people's value. Are we together now? Yes. When you see elderly people, respect them and greet them and honor them. When you see great people, don't pretend greatness. Don't push them away and say, after all, they are just lucky. That is the mindset of a defeated person already. Are we together? As I am today, there are people that are eternally worthy of my respect and my, my honor. I will never see them and not honor them. When I came in here and I saw our father, I got up and we were laughing and I was greeting him. Apostle would not turn me into a stupid person. I want to live long, I want to live far, and life is a product of seed time and harvest. Are we together? There are some of you after the grace, they say, turn to somebody and just say, hello, for where? I'm on my way going home. And you find out that you are going home alone. Everything you are doing it alone. Nobody cares about you. Whether you are present or absent. You see, if your presence, if your absence is not missed, it means that your presence is not adding anything. Whether you come for koinonia or not, nobody knows. Doesn't matter. And you've been coming for, they'll say, how many years have you been? Me? I'm six years old in koinonia. And nobody knows you. Are you in any department? I don't join departments. I just come and receive and I'm on my way going. Are you learning? Mindset. When I learned this principle, as simple as it sounds, it has opened, listen, second only to the law of encounter, this is the most powerful spiritual law that I've learned. The law of honor has come as a subset of this. I have indoctrinated myself to show honor and to communicate gratitude. These two things have opened me up to a world of possibilities beyond my wildest imagination. Thank you. Somebody said thank you for 50 naira and that thank you today has given him a house. Somebody said thank you for a shoe and that has given him all kinds of things. You must learn to be grateful, be lavish in communicating gratitude. To men and to God and watch what begins to happen in your life you become Beulah and Hephzibah don't just meet people and the first thing you are looking for needs give me let me give you a secret as we wrap up anytime you see great people minimize asking for things every man's need is his point of contact I was teaching the leaders this morning and if people do not need your money 
they need your your reassurance your courtesy so i just want to thank you so much do you know you would think that i haven't taught this thing for many years i would be immune to it myself i'm not talking of flattery there are people who see me and ah, apostle i'm so grateful usually when i'm passing maybe at the airport and people want to do all kinds of things i'm greeting them and someone says apostle your message has changed my life I'm, i just want to say thank you and i feel very endeared oh may god bless you come god bless you god bless you and you see a little child how are you little girl god bless you what are you doing madam well i'm trusting god for this and that can that simple thing can become a, the schedule of a change of season. Thou son of David, he said, have mercy on me. He never called him Jesus. You are royalty from the root of David. Have mercy on me. And Jesus looks at him and says, I'm busy, but I will attend to you. Something about your communicating honor and desperation has called for my attention. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. Oh, speak from the heavens and I'll hear from the earth. My altar is calling me. Oh, God, my worship is calling me. Oh, my gratitude is all in you. Oh when I finish meetings like this and I go home, you would think I would just go and balance. I smuggle myself into the room and go down my knees. And I say, Lord Jesus, thank you. Some may trust in horses and chariots, but you are the reason why we have these results, including this night, without fail. Lord, I thank you. Your child has come before you. They call me all kinds of names, but I know who I am before you. I have come to return thanks. You are the hand behind every result that we see. And God says, even at this level, you can do it for me. Let's measure a thousand cubits. You are ready for a new level. Some of you here may be business people, maybe ministry, maybe a career, and you find out that you have plateaued at a level. It may not be the absence of skill. It may be the absence of honor and the absence of gratitude. You can literally live of gratitude. You can literally live of honor. Believe me. You can spend your, like they ask you, what are you doing? I'm working in First Bank. What are you doing? I'm working in ABU. And they ask you, what are you doing? You say, I'm a practitioner of honor and gratitude. You literally can use it as a stream of income. Let the fire from your altar touch. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Have you learned something tonight? If you've not learned anything from all that I've said, just pay attention to this that I said, God first is the secret to an excelling life. God first, not God among, not God later, not God as part of, God first. Number two, that the quality of your mindset is what defines the possibilities in your life. Listen, you will see doors open for you beyond your imagination if you can pay the price. Can I tell you, you may not have a job. Use the time to read quality books that kingdom compliant books that build your mind. Apostle, I'm trusting God for a husband. I'm trusting God for a wife. While you are trusting, keep reading what works on your mindset because if this version of you marries, you will kill the man. Be walking on that mindset. In the name of Jesus, anger you must leave. In the name of Jesus, wickedness you must leave. In the name of Jesus, evil talking, talking like a parrot. In 10 minutes you have read a whole book in somebody's ears. Let it be out of my destiny. In the name of Jesus, I am ready for a great life. And God says, now you see. It is often said that when the student is truly ready, the teacher always comes. 
Are we together? I'm ready for prosperity, but I don't have money. I don't know anything about finances. Then learn honor and gratitude. Start from there. Learn honor and gratitude. Go online. Principles of honor. Listen to messages and start praying. Gratitude. Get five people in your life who have made sincere contributions and send them a text. Sir, ma, this is just to appreciate you. I had the opportunity to attend the service this night and I was challenged afresh again. And I thought of communicating what I've learned. Thank you for all that you have been. Thank you for helping my children. Thank you for helping my husband or my wife. This is simply saying thank you. After two days, you will get a text. What is your name again? I am so, so, so and so. See me in my office tomorrow. And the person can say, I have been doing this for everyone, but nobody has done this. I showed my wife your text and she said, let us help this person. And that's it. Look, it is so easy to rise when you understand the power of kingdom systems. Hallelujah. Are you learning? Some of you, even your biological parents, you have not shown them love. You have not shown them mercy. You don't care. After all, they are your parents. Mama may not be able to speak English, but she had to fry a kara to send you to school. Now that you have a job, just counting 50,000 and giving her is not gratitude. That's responsibility. Gratitude is one day you will draw the chair and sit down with her there and say, Mama, I want to tell you something. I know that you see that I'm a big man today, but I want to say thank you. It was your sacrifice. You went through so much to make this happen. And Mama is just crying there and saying, My son, you have become a big man. I don't have what to give you, but let me place my hand on my chest and let me bless you. May your children rise to be greater than you. You will just say amen, but it is recorded and archived in heaven. You give birth to your child and one wicked person wants to come and be friends to your children, that covenant will speak. Drive them far from you because mama left a blessing. Hallelujah. Forever, for as long as I live, I live a grateful life. A grateful life. When I came and got down out of the vehicle, I was just nodding my head and walking. I was almost in tears, looking at the faithfulness of God, the mercies of God. Many of you have forgotten what God has done in your life too soon because you are looking for something in front. Learn to be grateful. Carry that mindset. Learn to practice honor. And you have scheduled a season of greatness. Let me recommend as an assignment, go and listen to all my teachings on mindsets. Go and look for them. Go on YouTube, look for them. Put it as a project. Sit down and listen. Don't assume, don't say, I was there. Have your life changed? If the answer is no, go and listen. Listen to it. Pray. You can spend the day fasting and lock yourself. Lord, my destiny must change. I am the one you are raising in this family to wipe the tears of people. Father, I pray that you will use me as you. the word of God is coming. You are writing, ah, God is showing me what I'm doing wrong now. The sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright Listen, you know why I raised this song? The power of illumination when your heart is sincere When you approach God with a meek heart, you are ready for light It will be an adventure of light You will listen to a message you've been listening to every day but your heart condition is what defines the light that comes from that message to you. There are people who have all kinds of messages. Oh, this one, I have it. But the, your heart is not yet prepared to receive the light. So you will just listen to it attentively. But you are not receiving anything. Go back with a purged heart and now listen. And you will find light that will bring tears out of your eyes. Man of God, hear me. Your destiny is waiting for you. 
everyone here listening whether you are inside all the overflows and those who are following online make up your mind that this mindset thing I will work on it don't say I am Yoruba don't say I am Igbo don't say I am Hausa I was saying it to our Abuja family he that comes from in the north is a northerner he that comes from the south is a southerner he that comes from the east is an easterner he that comes from Europe is a European and American and so on and so forth the Bible says but he that cometh from above is above all so beyond your earthly geographic context you must start having the mind of Christ embrace the character the traits of discipline embrace the traits of diligence and most importantly honor and gratitude and you have found the power keys you don't need to know everything but the interesting thing is that the results begin to come even while you are growing hallelujah I'm going to pray for you but we'll all pray by ourselves and then I'll speak over your life and we're done for tonight remember our text Joshua 1 verse 8 it says and this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do Joshua 1 and 8 you got it right go back 1 8 Joshua it says for then shalt thou make thy ways prosperous and for God's sake and even as a prophecy for everyone here it says thou shall have good success the kind of success that God increases you on all sides and while that is happening the joy of salvation is bubbling within your heart your life becomes a conduit of impact not just accumulating money and accumulating relationships with no value are you seeing that now everything about your life becomes a blessing Genesis 12 and verse 2 and 3 it says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed that's what I want to happen to my life my my desire is not to be said oh this person is anointed or has this and has that no no that Jesus Christ was revealed through my life and that whilst revealing Jesus you were able to impact the lives of people someone will say apostle is because of you I had the privilege to go to school someone will say it's because of you I had the privilege to have a house a roof over my head I was when I saw the picture of the outreach yesterday that was done I was so humbled looking at these widows and looking at these people and that which happened to them and I was so inspired I said this is how to live this is how to live it's not about driving cars and eating whatever this is how to live it says oh teach us to number our days the Bible says that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom right where you are sitting I want you to lay your hands on your head and I want you to begin to cry before the Lord your maker pray from the depth of your heart thank you my precious people God bless you God bless you please begin to pray let it be from the depth of your heart God desires for you to grow. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Shabakata barakatos kadebalato. Shabrantesca barakos. Embrekate balakatos kafraska debeleta doshekate. Entas kataparata safrasa debeleke tebrantege balakosia. In the name of Jesus, lay your hands and declare, my destiny you must open up. Good success is my heritage in Christ. 
and in the mighty name of Jesus everything that has enthroned itself above the knowledge of God in my life I come against it now in the name of Jesus someone pray someone pray everything that has declined my prayer life everything that has declined my word study life everything that has declined my passion for the house of God my passion for the things of God I cry unto you God of heaven let there be a revival let there be a refiring of my spiritual life tonight Someone pray. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sea. Your name is to be Adonai From the rising of the sun To the setting of the sea Your name is to be Adonai He said, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your might, with all your soul, with all your strength. If you don't love him with all, you don't love him. If you don't love him with all, you don't love him. If you don't love him with all, please pray, don't be tired. You've been sitting for a while, pray, pray. Take a few minutes to pray. We're discussing the matters of your destiny. Just a few minutes. Anoint my everything. You have my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord, you have my everything. 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 Take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. That nothing and no one will take your place in my life. That nothing and no one will rise above you in my life. That must be your determination tonight. To dethrone every idol. The idols of men. The idols of things. The idols of achievements. That they all bow at the feet of Jesus Christ. He alone be exalted as Lord and Christ. And then you watch the wonder working power of a victorious life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are still laying your hands on your head. You are going to pray over your mind. Every stronghold, every demonic manipulation that is making me behave in a way that is driving success from me. Behaviors of dishonor, behaviors of carelessness, behaviors of indiscipline. 
I come against you in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Every mindset, every stronghold locked up within my inside that is programming my actions, scheduling seasons of defeat, scheduling seasons of loneliness, scheduling seasons of pain, poverty, failure, in the name of Jesus, the Lord rebuke you. Open your mouth and pray. I rise above and beyond the grip of culture. I rise above and beyond the grip of my past. I rise above and beyond the grip of my associations. I rise above and beyond the grip of my sociological context. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Can I give you one more prayer point? Every spirit and every covenant that has tied down those who went before me to produce a life of failure, I declare you are broken concerning me. Open your mouth and pray. Every foundation of poverty, every foundation of mediocrity, whether territorial, whether family, the Bible declares that it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder the yoke from off your neck and that it shall be destroyed because of the anointing someone pray everything I saw my father suffer everything I saw my mother suffer everything I saw people from my region suffer by the blood of Jesus I am exempted from it exempted from begging exempted from failure exempted from poverty exempted from living a wasted life exempted from mediocrity exempted from smallness Hallelujah. Listen, please look at me. We're wrapping up. As simple as these principles are, I found them and they changed my life. When we seem to look very super, super human, these are the forces that we stand upon that elevates us and sometimes makes us look as if we're such a big deal. We are not any big deal in ourselves. Except that when you stand on these laws, you tame life like an animal. Let me speak over your life. Oh, only. Oh, only. Let's see who comes. Holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes. I pray for every closed destiny here that has refused to open up in the name of Jesus the son of the living God even the one who helps men I declare may that door of your destiny be opened now may that door of your destiny be opened now may that door of your destiny be opened now hear me no matter what has gone wrong before now I prophesy to you, remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. My God is giving you a new beginning. My God is giving you a new beginning. My God is giving you a new beginning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray for everyone under the sound of my voice who might be under any kind of 
situation that is weighing on you maybe a financial challenge maybe you are in debt you are owing or there's something wrong and it looks like shame and reproach is imminent every time you get into these kinds of trouble it is the office of the prophetic that brings you out i decree and declare everything that looks like shame i call upon the god of my covenant in the name of jesus let shame and reproach depart from your destiny depart from your destiny depart from your destiny Depart from your destiny. Depart from your destiny. Now I pray for you. Whatever has killed your prayer life, your word study life, maybe the challenges of life, maybe you stepped into wrong associations that have downplayed God and downplayed the things of God. Let there be restoration now. Let there be restoration now. Finally, we've spoken about good success. Let me pray for you. The Bible says it was the Lord that advanced Aaron and Moses. They did not just go forward. They were advanced by God. He says, by you I can run through a troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. That a man can receive nothing. Even financially. Because I know that many of us here right now, if I ask you to submit your prayer request, about 70 to 80 percent of it will be largely financial issues god is able to help men to bring you out of financial shame let me speak over your life it will always come from god through men to you therefore in the name of jesus anyone crying for financial help that god will come and bail you out i declare in the name of jesus receive help receive help let help us arise for you in the name of jesus christ in jesus name we pray let me make an altar call now please no movement no movement whether inside or outside just be patient allow me make an altar call then i'll make a very important announcement about tomorrow and we're done you need jesus every time we talk about jesus there are people who do not care i hope tonight will be that night that you say jesus i am truly ready you are here so many people inside all the overflows it is never too late for as long as you have breath in your nostrils to make it right with jesus perhaps you were invited to come here or perhaps you have been here again and again but you have never consciously made that decision the bible says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son it says that whosoever that blessing is for whosoever whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have life eternal verse 17 says for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him you are here and you mean it with jesus you are saying apostle if you would give me a chance I would make it right with Jesus or you are here and you are saying apostle things from last year into this year my life has not really been the way it should be I have I have just fallen apart my life has gone haywire I need to put my life in order and make it right with Jesus I'm going to call these two categories of people if you are in the main auditorium here I'm going to request that you move forward we have a limited space here and then all those who are outside once the front is full you may make use of your various leds and for those who are following listening online it is not too late to make jesus right to to make things right with jesus as far as your destiny is concerned i'm just looking for one person who can say apostle i'm not going to lie to myself i really need jesus i'm going to count one to five whether you are inside or outside once the front is full here then you can come outside you can begin to come one celebrate them as they come jesus the son of god i believe in you i believe koinonia celebrate them as they come to jesus jesus the son of god
the Son of God. I believe in you. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it is a glorious thing to see people come to Jesus sincerely. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he says he will in no wise cast away. These precious ones representing all those who are scattered across the overflows and following online. Perhaps someone is just following from your home and right there in your silence, Jesus is speaking to you. I salute all of you who have come out. It is never too late to make it right with Jesus. May I please request that by, as a way of surrender, you lift your right hand above your head and please say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe in you that you are the son of God I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior as my Lord and as my King I declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight till forever i am a child of god amen keep your hands lifted father thank you the bible declares that as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away these precious ones have come declaring your lordship by the authority of scripture i declare their sins forgiven and in the name of Jesus, I call them bona fide recipients of eternal life. From tonight, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And I declare by the authority of God's word that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. You walk in newness of life from tonight until forever you will spend your day serving Jesus. For in the mightiest name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Now, very quickly. I want you to please do me a favor just turn to your back you'll see the counselors waving their hands I'd like you to please follow them in concert they will have a word with you very quickly and you'll be back to your seat let's honor them let's honor them give them a big big God bless you dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless Check our homepage for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye! Pray! Pray! Pray for your destiny! the face of development lord grant me the discipline